on Friday evening while the kids were safely with their grandmother. My wife Emma and I were at home, contemplating how to spend the upcoming weekend. We were starting to feel a bit down about the monotony of our plans when suddenly the phone rang. On the other end was Harry, our old friend who had just turned 21 today. He invited us to his country house, promising an unforgettable party. We were nearly twice his age and anticipated that most of the guests would be his age group. But after some discussion, we decided to go anyway. Emma asked about attire, and I suggested bringing some dressy clothes just in case. Saturday morning, we stopped to buy a gift and headed to the party. Arriving at the country house, we found the place to be stunning. There were two houses on the property. We were a bit late, and all the assembled guests came out to greet us. There weren't many people. Besides Harry, there were two guys around 23, John and Oliver, and three girls, two older ones around 25, Rebecca and Zoe, and a much younger one, Kara J. Zoe's sister. Everyone looked rather casual. Oliver, a muscular guy of unspecified ethnicity with tanned skin, and the, the youngest Kara, our eye. Kara wasn't a beauty per se, a medium height with a nice figure and pretty features. The girls were dressed up, and seeing them, Emma immediately went to change. When she emerged, everyone fell silent. She looked stunning, with her tan, in a short dress with cutouts, long flowing hair, and high heels. Certainly she outshone the girls who were ten years younger. The guys couldn't take their eyes off her, and the girls watched her with tense expressions. We went onto the premises, which were quite disorganized. Everyone was just sitting around drinking beer and wine. It all seemed scattered, with unpacked bags lying around and meat waiting to be grilled. Emma didn't like any of this, so she took charge. Harry and I started preparing charcoal for the bonfire, while Emma asked John and Oliver to tidy up around. The men willingly followed Emma's instructions while the girls grumbled but still lent a hand. Only Kara practically stuck to Emma, helping her with everything. At first, the young people weren't particularly thrilled about our presence, barely talking, but eventually they loosened up. After about an hour of efforts, we sat down at the table to congratulate the birthday boy. As evening fell and it grew chilly, we moved indoors. Emma suggested having a disco, and everyone supported her idea. We lit candles and turned on music, starting to dance. At first, I danced slow dances with Emma. The guys were hesitant to invite her and didn't know how I'd react. Her invited Kara, but she kept her distance from me and wouldn't even let me hold her. I danced with Rebecca and Zoe, nothing remarkable. Harry danced with Emma. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw his hand sliding over her backside, and she was smiling. I think others noticed, too. Then Oliver dared to invite Emma, followed by John. They danced, laughed, but kept it appropriate. Emma, of course, was the center of attention. Rebecca and Zoe shot jealous glances at Emma, jealous of the guys. As I passed by the kitchen, I accidentally overheard Rebecca and Zoe talking. Why did they even show up here? They should have gone to their friends. Let's get them drunk. And they poured some vodka into our and Emma's glasses, adding to our wine. I was surprised but didn't show it, deciding to observe them instead. I chose not to tell Emma anything. She was drinking and didn't notice anything. After a while, she was obviously the most intoxicated. I pretended to be drunk too. The girls were looking at Emma and me, smiling. I noticed Kare staying somewhat apart from everyone else but she still didn't leave Emma's side. Often Kara's hands rested either on Emma's knees or on her back when they sat and talked. Several times they even danced a slow dance together, and Kara ran her hand down Emma's back, even lower. Emma came up to me and said, this girl keeps complimenting me. We laughed and went on to enjoy ourselves further. The merriment continued for a long while. I went outside to the guys, and we discussed something for quite a while. When I returned, I went to look for Emma. She was sitting in a chair, with Kara sitting next to her on the armrest, wrapping her arm around Emma's neck and leaning in close. I leaned towards Emma. She was very drunk. Emma said, I'm very drunk. I feel unwell. I want to sleep. Put me down. I picked her up and carried her to the bedroom, as Harry indicated. Harry waved his hand, instructing to turn on the night lamp, internally shrugging, not understanding the logic behind this request. I complied and turned on the light. Then I carefully laid Emma on the bed, her dress smoothed out beneath her, as if summoned to create a cozy atmosphere. After that, tucking her in with a blanket, I went downstairs. There, various offers of drinks greeted me and succumbing to the mood and social pressure, I didn't deny myself this pleasure. 
When I felt like I might lose control, I announced that I was very drunk. At one in the morning, Harry approached me and said, let's go to another house, winking at me. Everyone dispersed into the rooms and Harry and I went. He led me into a room with a large monitor. I didn't understand at first. Harry said that Kara asked him to take me to sleep in another house and not let me out until morning. We laughed, wondering what she had in mind. Harry said that Kara is still a girl and nobody touches her besides, she's kind of strange. Harry pressed a button and an image appeared on the screen. Now I understood. Hidden cameras were placed in the rooms. He said parents installed them for safety. He turned on Emma's room and we discussed the evening and drank wine. I was contemplating something when Harry nodded towards the screen. I saw Kara sneaking into Emma's room. Kara was wearing the same dress. She sat for a while and then lay down next to Emma, hugging her. After some time, she pulled the blanket down a bit, adjusted the dress, and began touching Emma intimately, then started kissing her. Kara freed the cherries from her dress and rubbed against Emma, who lay motionless. Kara grew bolder and started moving lower. She pulled down the blanket completely and pulled up Emma's dress. Emma was wearing very beautiful lingerie. Kara slowly took them off and slowly spread Emma's legs. Everything was smoothed with Emma, as usual. Kara lay between them and examined everything there for a while. Then she leaned in and touched with her tongue a few times. It was evident that she was doing it for the first time, but it seemed she liked it. And after a while, Kara was working on Emma. Then she got up, took off her underwear. She didn't remove her hair. Everything was natural. Kara lay down next to Emma, took Emma's hand with one hand, and started touching her with the other. She murmured, touch me, I want you to touch me. Emma continued to lie still and asleep. Harry and I watched with curiosity. We looked at the screen. The door unexpectedly opened, and John peeked into Emma's room. At that moment, Kara lay with her eyes closed. Kara quickly removed her hands and adjusted her robe. He said, Kara, you're here, and I've been looking for you all over the house. What are you doing here? Kara looked embarrassed. Emma still lay with her legs apart. He asked, is she really asleep? Here is the translation of your text, preserving its meaning and style. Maybe she'll do it while her husband is asleep. Just keep quiet, or I'll tell everyone what you were doing here. Kara nodded fearfully. Yes, he's asleep. She's very drunk. And her husband is at another house with Harry. John said, go close the door to this house and come back. Kara returned and sat in the corner of the bed. He closed the door to the room with a laugh. I told Harry, we need to stop this. The person is not feeling well, and I intended to go to them. But then Harry pointed to the screen again. John approached Kara and said, take it, or I'll tell everyone. Kara took it almost crying. At that moment, Emma half opened her eyes, raised and turned her head towards them, watching until they didn't pay attention to her. I realized Emma was drunk, but not to that extent, and that she was pretending and deceiving us about her condition. So I decided not to interfere and watch with Harry. John asked Kara, do you want to watch? Kara shrugged. He suggested she sit at Emma's for a better view, raised Emma's legs a bit higher. Emma lay still again. John whispered, look, she's asleep, but so excited. And in the evening, she was aloof. Then he turned to Kara and whispered, Kara, lean over. I'll spill it on you. Kara started shaking her head. No, don't. He said, okay, just kidding. Lifted Emma's legs up and said to Kara, hold her legs. I'll go to that place. Kara started holding Emma's legs. John spread with one hand and with the other. He held his and started. Emma moaned. Kara said, stop. It hurts her so much. John tried again. Emma moaned again. He moved a few times, got scared that she would wake up, put on his underwear, and left the room. Her past is about to go to Emma again, but then the girls and Pasha entered her room. Harry said that Pasha had problems with girls because of his size. We decided to watch. Zoe had a bottle of wine and a couple of glasses in her hands. They smiled. Wow, what are you doing here? John likely told them everything. Kara sat next to Emma. The girls immediately sent Kara to sleep. They were aggressively against Emma after the day's events. They sat down on the bed and started examining her. Rebecca whispered, if I were a guy, I would have her now. Look how appetizing she is. Pasha said John has already had her in everything and smiled. Rebecca asked Pasha, don't you want to? When she's sober, you won't be able to seize the moment. Come on. Pasha shrugged. Rebecca poured wine into glasses, handed one to Pasha, drink with your girlfriend, look, how she's waiting for you, already spread. They laughed and Rebecca approached Emma with the wine, lifted her head, 
and made her drink the glass to the bottom, poured another one, and Emma drank the second glass. Zoe said, enough, she'll feel bad. Let's turn her over, or she'll wake up and make trouble for us. The girls carefully turned Emma, placed several pillows, spread her legs, and raised them. Zoe started taking off Pasha's jeans. When she took them off, a one appeared, which was already tense. The girls looked at Pasha. Wow, what were you hiding? The girls were excited, approached Pasha, and started touching. He's really big, especially surprising was his thickness. Rebecca said, we'll arrange everything now. She took out an arousing cream from her pocket. She said, you're going to love this surprise we have for you. She continued touching quickly until Emma groaned. That's it. We're ready? Zoe said on the other side. Let's hold her down. They sat on opposite sides of Emma, one hand holding her shoulders, the other spreading apart. Pasha positioned himself, opened up, and started slowly. Emma groaned and squirmed a bit, but Zoe and Rebecca held her easy, easy. It'll feel good soon. Just bear with it a bit. Pasha began moving. Rebecca asked Pash, how's it going? Pasha replied, great, just what we needed. Zoe said, yeah, looks like she's enjoying it too. Listen to how she moans. And the girls chuckled softly. Emma groaned, burying her face in the pillow. Suddenly, Emma screamed into the pillow, making involuntary movements in different directions. Pasha panicked, what's happening to her? Zoe said, it's an eruption. Don't stop. When Emma calmed down a bit, Zoe handed her buns. Wow, Rebecca said, John really went all out. Zoe said, yeah, Pash, come here. Rebecca, hold her tight. Pasha tried, and Emma groaned. No, it's not working. Let's just wake her up. Then Zoe pulled Pasha's hand away from Emma. Enough with her. We want some too. They stood beside Emma. Pasha started using her too. She groaned. No, no. It hurts. Stop. She got up. Let's go to our room and continue. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's try gradually. They laid Emma on her back and left. Harry and I exchanged glances. Well, we were drunk enough by then. I said, Harry, go help Emma spill it out since everything's going that way. Let's do it thoroughly and quickly. Harry asked, are you sure? Yes, Harry left. When everyone left Emma, she didn't expect to see anyone else, so she lay there, enjoying herself. The door opened. Harry came in, and she had to pretend to be asleep again. Harry closed the door and casually asked aloud, did I lock the door to the house? Oh, right, I did. He said it for Emma's sake, to reassure her. He approached her, opened his mouth slightly, and started. Emma opened her mouth wide, and Harry sitting down, began moving. Then Harry stood up, knowing Emma wasn't really asleep, so without fearing to wake her, he started flipping her over. Emma didn't open her eyes but moved towards him and actively responded. After a while, she could barely hold back her moans. Finally, he positioned himself, spread apart. Emma groaned, but she grabbed onto the bed with her hands and moved towards Harry. Harry began moving slowly and after a while, more vigorously, he spilled, laid on the bed, covered her with a blanket, and went back to me. I led Harry behind me, reassuring him that everything was fine. Suddenly it struck me, take me to Emma, I'll tell her I'm drunk. On our way, we met John and Harry laughing. Put me between them, leading me to the room where Emma was already asleep. They gently laid me next to her and went to sleep. I played the drunkard so convincingly that I even believed in my role. Sometimes I pretend to be drunk, just to observe the world around me. Emma turned to me and said, You've been drinking again, as she began to touch and kiss me. Now I was lying there motionless. Emma started trying to take off my jeans. After a while, she succeeded and took me in her hand. Emma moved and mo moaned. Suddenly, there was a rustle. Emma didn't hear it. After a while, she tensed up, her hand covering her mouth to muffle any sound of a cry. Then she lay down and saw Kara by the door. Kara said, Emma, I'm sorry for interrupting, but John has been bothering me. Can I stay here for a while? Emma said, lie down next to me, sleep if you want. Emma lay weakly between me and Kara. After a while, Kara tried to touch Emma. Emma said, Kara, I can't anymore. I'm tired. I feel bad. And she removed Kara's hand. Kara got offended and turned away. Then Emma looked at my banana and said, Kara, let's switch places. Kara didn't react. Emma repeated, Kara, you'll lie down here now and do what I say. Understand? Kara nodded and began moving towards me. Emma silently pushed her head towards my banana. Kara stood up and awkwardly started. Emma started taking off his clothes, sit down, but don't rush. I remembered what Harry had said about her. Kara sat down and started moving slowly. Deceiving, I thought. 
At first, Emma lay and watched as Kara lowered and raised herself. But seeing all of this, Emma became aggressive. She stood behind Kara, grabbed me by the drumsticks, and started squeezing and pulling them forcefully. It hurt. Or from then to whamst, she couldn't bear to watch what was happening. Then she pointed Kara to another spot. She told her, stand up. Kara stood up higher. Emma directed her hand to another spot. Her Kara began to protest, no, I don't want to, it will hurt, please. The banana was inside. Kara wriggled, forgetting about the pain. I couldn't stand it anymore. Kara lay down next to me. Tears welled in her eyes. She said, I've never been with a man before. I like women. Emma lay back to me, turned to Kara, and began to calm her down. I didn't know, don't cry, everything will be okay. She began to touch her cherries. Then, when Kara calmed down a bit, Emma said, spread your legs. After a while, Kara hugged Emma around the neck, pressed against her, and began to moan loudly. Emma said, that's enough. It's almost morning. You need to go to your room. Everyone will wake up soon. Kara started kissing Emma. I love you so much. Can I come over to you? I'll do everything you say. Please don't forget me, Emma said. Okay, I'll talk to Chris about it, but now go to sleep. In the morning, Emma and I woke up almost simultaneously. Emma turned to me. How are you? I said, I'm okay, I guess. I pushed the blanket aside and looked at Emma. I said, awful. I'll never drink again. We got up with Emma. Everyone was still asleep. We went to say goodbye to Harry. Emma said, come visit us now. We said our goodbyes and went home. On the way, Emma scolded me for always getting drunk to the point of being incoherent, for not paying attention to her. You're behaving quite strangely. Remember how you were hanging on to Kara? She said, casting a glance at me. My eyes widened in surprise. That's impossible, I replied confidently. She seemed to calm down after my response, and for the remaining half of the journey, we silently slid along the road. In her eyes, I noticed a reflection of the previous night, which had clearly excited her greatly.